addiction classified as a mental illness and yet is treated by places who say, and I quote, we do not deliver psychological therapies under this roof, i.e. there is no mental health treatment available at a mental health facility. That is the state of mental health treatment under the Tory party. My methadone had been increased to the point that I was brain fogged and stupefied to the point that I could not do my f job as per government guidelines on drug treatment i am fully entitled to second line treatment at this point at my age at the length of time that i have been an addict second line treatment will they give me it no they won't if you're an opiate addict you're fucked So hello you beautiful bastards of the internet and welcome to a video that I'm hoping is going to be a bit of a vlog about cutting down on methadone and seeing just how horrible or otherwise it turns out to be. Um, and I wanted to make this video partly because because I'm cutting down on methadone anyway and uh, it's making me restless as fuck and I can't concentrate on jack shit and... Um, it's a good distraction, it gives me something to do. Uh, but also, I made a video about methadone in about 2016, 2017, and it was like wholly positive at this point. I had nothing bad to say about it. Um, however, it's, it's obviously now like considerably more years on, um, and uh, this year it will be 15 years that I've been on methadone, um, which... Uh, is pretty fucked up. Um, well, not really. Like, I, I do believe, I do believe there are some people who do need to be on it long term, maybe even lifelong. Like, I do believe in that stance. Um, but the thing is that the, the, drug, the drug treatment agency I'm under are fucking, oh man, they're so bad. They're so, 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 so bad. And um, I, <laughs> they've upped and upped and upped and upped my dose because they refuse to do anything more useful. And just like with any any medication, like if you're on something and it, it helps at a low dose, great. But if you then like bosh it up to like seven times that dose, it's probably not gonna do you a whole lot of good. The treatment center I'm under, um, and there's there's gonna be kind of quite a lot of a lot of this in the book that I am planning to put out. A lot of it is about shit drug treatment centers, shit drug treatment. Uh, being neurodivergent and an addict. The book in question refers to one drug treatment center as the Pacific Treatment Center. Uh, we're going to stick with that nomenclature for this video because Pacific, I did take it from the drug treatment center I'm under. It's not called the Pacific Treatment Center, but it's not a very different name. When I first started going to Pacific, this was 2009, so I was like this little 24-year-old baby with, with no uh, interesting diagnoses whatsoever. I, like, I had depression, uh, anorexia, but I, did, I didn't have like ADHD, I didn't have autism, I didn't know any of those were, were my things at all. Um, <coughs> and um, it seemed amazing. At first I walked in, I was like completely mind-blown because I'd been in ED treatment which in this area is non-existent. I'd been in depression treatment. In this area is downright harmful. Like worse than non-existent is downright harmful. Um, and then I found drug treatment. I was like, what, what the fuck is this? These, this place is like, you can, you can walk in any time of the day and someone will fucking sort out your <laughs> mayhem. Um, they've, you know, they, they, they do like needle exchange schemes. They've got like acupuncture. They've got numerous different therapies available, available under the roof. They've got decent workers who are always there for you. They've got like an out of hours scheme. They've got like group activities. There, there was just so much. And I was like, are you kidding? This is amazing. I, sh I should have gone to drugs years ago. Maybe I would have actually been therapized when I needed to be therapized. Um, but anyway, I have watched this fucking place decline and decline and decline over the past 15 years and not like obviously obviously it is tory cutbacks it is tory austerity measures however i swear to god those fuckers at pacific have been made to sign an nda about the tories or something because every fucking time and i you know as soon as the tories got in i saw the decline and i would say it's the tories isn't it it's the, the tories are, are what's cutting this back every fucking time i said that they're like mm, no no it's not the tories mm, no it's just policy it's just general policy who's making the fucking policy um 
anyway, these days it's become so staunchly obvious that, yeah, you, you tell your worker, like, it's the fucking Tories, isn't it? And that they will be like, yeah, it's, 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 it's the Tories. Um, because at this point, at this point in the state of UK mental health drug treatment, we now have uh, drug treatment facilities. We, you know, addiction classified as a mental health issue, a mental illness and yet is treated by places who say, and I quote, we do not deliver psychological therapies under this roof, i.e. there is no mental health uh, treatment available at a mental health facility. And this does not, I'm, I'm sorry, fucking soapbox, this does not just go for drug treatment centres, this also goes for inpatient clinics. So, not specifically drug treatment, I'm talking about you know, end of the line, you've just lost your shit and you've had to go inpatient, right? Um, they also do not provide psychological therapies in my region. There's no groups, there are no therapists, no shrinks that see you. You will be reassessed once a week to see if you're ready for release, but they will not therapize you, they will not shrink you, they will not give you treatment, they will not entertain you in groups or anything. They will dump you in front of a TV with a load of other mad people, they will feed you food that is fucking unpalatable and swimming in grease. Everyone who's been there for a long time is morbidly obese from the critically, dangerously disgusting food they are giving people there. Um, they will medicate you half to death for sure, but they will not give you any psychological treatment. They just see you every week, are you ready for release? And you either fuck off back into the community with no support, or you stay there to get fatter and fatter and fatter and more unfit and more mad and more hopeless and more desperate. That is the state of mental health treatment under the Tory party. Um, and yeah, so... <laughs> So this is the thing, with, with the Pacific uh, Drug Treatment Place, they don't do any kind of therapy. Um, so they'll outsource you to, you know, other therapy places in, in the, you know, if you're particularly crackers like I am, then they will go, well, like, what, what else is, is going on locally? Can we, can we send you here? Can we send you there? So that sometimes means that if you need a particular med change or you need something doing, you will phone up your, your mad people and you'll say, look, blah, and they'll say, no, 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 that sounds like an addiction thing, go talk to Pacific. So you talk to Pacific, they say, no, 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 this is your GP. So you talk to your GP, your GP immediately says, no, 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 this isn't me. So the whole buck gets passed round in a fucking triangle with you in the middle going, I need some help here. Um, it, it's a clusterfuck. Um, and for the past, I think, two or three years... <laughs> Uh, for the past two or three fucking years, I have been trying to get second line treatments from these motherfuckers because I am fully entitled, as per government guidelines on drug treatment, I am fully entitled to second line treatments at this point, at my age, at the length of time that I have been an addict, having tried all the first line treatments, suboxone, methadone, therapy, all of it, and more, uh, second line treatment. Will they give me it? No, they fucking won't, because Tory government. Um, as it turns out, if you're an alcoholic at the Pacific Place, you're in luck, because uh, they have all the whizzy-whizzy things for alcoholics. Uh, they can have all the newest drugs, anti-craving drugs, you know, if you drink alcohol, you get sick as a dog, drugs, all of those kinds of things. If you're an opiate addict, you're fucked. Um, and I, I have literally tried to move out of the fucking county to another county where they do prescribe second line treatments. Uh, and I couldn't do that for, for reasons that are just too tedious and ridiculous to get into. Uh, to be fair, I don't even know if I would have been able to get second line treatments there either just because they say they do them. It's a Tory government. They don't really want it known that they do second line treatments because controversial. Harm reduction, always controversial. Um... So I'm kind of stuck battling with these motherfuckers. It has got me fucking nowhere, apart from so so dementedly furious that I've written an entire novel uh, about this thing and I will probably publish it in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, my, my, my answer to, you know, to, to me complaining and saying, well, look, something needs to be done here. Every fucking time, it's just... We can up your methadone, that's all we can do. More methadone, more methadone, more methadone, more methadone, more methadone. Um... And the last time it was upped was about two or three years ago. 
and the effects were instantaneously just shit. Um, like for me, there was there was this stupid little like little bit of placebo effect. Ooh, yay! Because you know I could pour out a bigger dose and take that. And for because methadone takes about an hour to an hour and a half to fully kick in, um, or on me it does anyway. So for that hour and a half, I could feel some level of hope that, hey, maybe I'm actually going to feel some kind of better, like cravings wise and just life being shit wise and all of that. I'd have an hour and a half of hope. It was, you know, it was like people who are addicted to scratch cards. You know, you're never going to fucking win, but you, just, just the hope. You're buying the hope, aren't you? For, the, for that little, oh, it might be me. It might be me. Fucking that, basically. Um, and then every time it kicks in, you don't feel a fucking thing apart from you get more more groggy but with no no pleasurable effects none um so i've just been in this this awful fucking haze of brain fog for the past two three years the reason i started scripting my videos and i'm not just talking about the nostalgia project like that was story times and it's like if you're going to tell a story time i feel like you can tell it better if you write it down and make it about as good as it can be first um what I'm talking about is the fact that I also started scripting a lot of um, subject-oriented videos, which was a bit random. You know, I don't know if anyone noticed it was a bit random, but it was a bit fucking random to suddenly just be like, yeah, you know, I, I know I've just waffled at you for the past six years or something, but instead I'm going to now start reading you fucking speeches. Uh, the reason I started doing that was that my methadone had been increased to the point that I was stupefied uh, I don't know how to put it politely, honestly. I really don't. Um, brain fogged and stupefied to the point that I could not do my fucking job. Um, recording sessions before this shit used to take about 45 minutes tops to make a 20 to 30 minute video, meh, 50 minutes tops. After the methadone increase, I would be sitting here for two, two, three hours to try and make a half hour video and then i mean it was so frustrating because the, the words would not come i would forget what the fuck i just said go round and round and round and round and round in circles start again go, oh it's so frustrating and then obviously the editing was a clusterfuck because when you've you know you've got a file this big and you've got to shorten it to this much of course the editing is going to be a clusterfuck right um you know plus just the, the randomness of like why the why the fuck are you reading this fucking speech at people like what um, but it was the it was the only way I could do anything was that and that's that's basically been the case up to now I've noticed in the last little while I feel like I've finally like it's taken two to three years for my tolerance to kind of actually bounce up to this point or I don't know I don't know am I able to function on it now or have I just forgotten that I used to be able to function better so now I'm like oh yeah well if I forget my words all the time that's just normal that's just who I am it's like no it's not not necessarily and then the other thing that has really sucked about this latest dose increase has been driving my car that I have not really been driving my car barely at all for the last two or three years because of this perpetual brain fog situation so yes I'm not trying to come off it completely at this point uh, because I do think I need to be on it to, to some to some degree um, because I'm like the main things I'm noticing are that autism and ADHD symptoms are like just through the roof um, since I started tapering stuff I I can't, can't concentrate on jack shit at all. Um, it's terrible. Like, I'm so restless. I've got so much energy, but I can't concentrate on anything. Can't get anything done. My ability to give eye contact has just gone to shit. Um, I, I'm really having to focus very hard on trying to keep my eyeball on the eyeball um, because the minute I started tapering, anytime I tried to record anything, I was just talking to the wall, talking to the wall, talking to the wall. I don't even notice I'm doing it at this point. It's, it's really annoying me, let alone you or anyone else. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, God, what else? Um, oh, I can't stand people. Can't, <laughs> can't stand being around people. Particularly not people I know, like, because, because they, they're the ones who want to converse with you the most. I just can't... I, I've just been buried. I've just had my hood up all the time. Earplugs in. Don't don't want to deal with people. Can't be dealing with it. Um, so for that reason, partly, mostly, well, yeah, partly, um, I don't want to come off it completely because I just I just think it, I would just I like I. It's, I mean, this is going to sound crazy, but I, I have this I have this distant memory of what sobriety <laughs> is supposed to be like. 
um, what life is, is actually supposed to be like on a clean head. Bear in mind, like I say, it's been 15 years, yeah. I don't really remember... I don't really remember what it's, it's supposed to feel like being alive. I don't know. Um, but I, I have these, these memories and everything was so unrelentingly grey and dull and cold and like bitingly crisp. Like the, the, the leaves and the, the grass and the pebbles, everything sharp, sharp, sharp relief. Everything is so, so sharp in like vis visually, you know, whereas everything is, um, I don't know. <laughs> Sounds mad. Um, it's reality is more more padded obviously obviously reality is more padded when you're like semi anesthetized for like 15 fucking years um and i i don't know how i would get on with with that that full like really in your face level of ultra reality you know um equally when i was on a, a way lower dose about a decade ago um, I used to cut down quite drastically for 24 hours before I went clubbing. I would wake up and even the air would feel different. Everything was just lighter and crisper and it was amazing. And it only lasted about 10 minutes because after about 10 minutes, that grogginess would kind of kick back in. I'd be like, shit, I didn't... Like, it's still in my system to a degree. Um, so in a way, I could kind of see if I came off it completely, maybe I would manage to like regain access to the whole pink fluffy cloud thing I had going on when I quit drinking heavily um, in 2018 um, and everything was just amazing it was amazing for like a most of a year everything was just like so amazing like every little thing was just like so amazing um, and maybe it would be like that but I, I don't know I don't know <laughs> so I've, I've kind of got um I've got a number in mind that I would like to cut down to. I, d I don't see any fucking point mentioning dosages and numbers and all that shit in this video um, because the, 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 one, <laughs> the one thing I've learned from an NA meeting, because I've been to one NA meeting in my life, which um, is probably quite, quite shocking to, to anyone who's, who knows me at all. You, you know I don't, I don't, I don't fuck with, with the whole 12-step NA, AA thing. But I did get so desperate that I did go to one NA meeting, which was like, ooh, that, that was like a real eating my hat moment, even to just go to the thing. But, you know, I was open to it. I, I was fucking there with my crochet. I was ready to be there for the, however long it was going to waffle on for. And, oh, my God, I can bear it. It was awful. No, 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 no. It was not for me. But I did take away this one thing, which was... Um, the thing about it's the similarities that matter not the differences so as in it doesn't matter what your drug of choice was what your dosage was yada yada it's like the the experience that you share with other addicts the, that is the more important thing and i think i agree with that when it comes to dosages and shit like that because you you know you know what i mean if, if you're an addict and you've ever watched videos about addiction you've ever been in the comments and you've seen these, these like ridiculously pathetic pissing contests where people have about like oh but you withdrew from such and such well i withdrew from such and such and i had to walk 15 miles in the snow shitting my pants <laughs> and it's like it's and some of them are funny stories like some of them are brutal like oh god that sounds awful kind of stories but um just the, the pissing contest people get into about dosages and stuff is just so unnecessary and unhelpful um but yeah the the dosages that i'm kind of aiming for i'm aiming to get down to about oh i'm not good at maths but um i think about a third of what i'm on right now <laughs> i just want to see how fast i can do it really <laughs> um, because I, I don't have the fucking patience i'd rather just feel a bit shit for a while and get it over with um I think like I'm I'm used to I'm used to the the pretty average usual stuff but I've started having these like muscle spasm things that that are horrible you know when you you get to the stage where you can't stop yawning and your eyes are just like piercing water all the time and all of that stuff um I get to that but I also start like my whole upper body just like spasms <laughs> every time I yawn I feel like my jaw is going to dislocate um it feels like I'm going to break bones in my fucking torso. It's horrible. It's just horrible, horrible, horrible. And whenever I get to that stage, it's like, no, I'm, I'm going to take something. It's this, fuck this noise. No, this is scary. Um, but um, I haven't had any of that yet. Albeit possibly because I have kind of been replacing 
the um well not replacing but but like just just lubricating lubricating the the downslope with uh with the odd benzo i am prescribed them so that's all okay and stuff but um that's probably why i'm not having muscle spasms because obviously they're muscle relaxants so um so maybe that's why i'm not like just twitching all over the place feeling like my jaw's going to dislocate which is nice um not having that going on um but that's quite scary so yeah so I'm, I'm willing to fill a certain level of crap to try and get this done quite quickly but i'm i'm not willing to to feel like really 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 shitty the whole purpose of methadone tapering is that you don't have to feel really 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 shitty we will see how long it takes or how long it takes before my willpower completely burns out and i just go yeah good enough um who knows we shall see the weirdest thing there is actually saliva in my mouth at the moment <laughs> and like, what is there not usually um so for 15 years i've been on this shit right and this shit dries out your like every membrane in your body it just dries it out so usually i have to put eye drops in my eyes constantly when i have contact lenses in um haven't needed that at all since since doing this um everywhere i go usually i have a huge bottle of water with me haven't needed that because I actually have spit in my mouth. There is there is like dribble in my mouth. <laughs> and it's really weird. It's really, really, really weird. Um and yeah, that's that's probably the weirdest one. I can't think I can't think what else there's been. Um I've actually I've actually been able to sleep, kind of. Not brilliantly. I mean to, okay, so I've been sleeping about three hours a night, but that's not unusual for me. So I'm I'm pretty well I'm pretty well versed in insomnia and insomnia activities. So um, <laughs> so three hours a night like whatever. We'll pop back hopefully on the end of this vlog and see how things are going. I am going to shut up now because I feel a bit sick. Well, hello. I am jumping in on the end of this video to update you on the taper that went to shit. Um, <laughs> I did really, really, really well for about six days and then I came down with a really, really shitty chest infection. I have never had a chest infection in my life. I don't get that kind of illness. Um, I got told off by the doctor when I went to go and get antibiotics um it seems like maybe doing this at my age really really rapidly after being on it for 15 years turns out opiates um kind of decrease your immune system didn't know that um <laughs> but uh, after 15 years in the middle of flu season at my age probably not like the wisest thing to have done it's so annoying because i literally managed to halve the amount of methadone i was taking within five days um by like it wasn't you know it wasn't super comfortable but by the fifth day my body had basically stopped complaining and i was just like a, a level level of discomfort it wasn't that bad um so i was planning to just level off at like half half dose and just wait until i stopped feeling shitty and then <coughs> all of this happened and um i unfortunately had to bounce back up not entirely all the way but most of the way and given i'm also taking codeine because i feel like crap uh I dare say my tolerance is, is basically more or less where it was when I started all of this. Um, but uh, would would I do this again? Yeah, yeah, I would actually, because I just have no patience with slow tapers. So I'm probably going to do this. I'm probably going to do this stupid shit again. Um, I'll probably just obviously wait until all of this is, is healed and I'm off the antibiotics and all of that. Um, ideally wait until flu season is over. But then I will give it another go. Obviously, if the same thing happens a second time, it, it you know, first time is just like bullshit. Second time, though, I'll have to admit it's a stupid thing to do and not do it again. But um, I do I do feel like it's worth doing. The interesting thing for me, though, was was feeling my real personality kind of come out, that I was so hyperactive for a lot of the time. Um, <laughs> that, like, yeah, the, the medication of ADHD and how much my ADHD is suppressed by methadone was very very interesting i was just so hyperactive a lot of the time which was really fun um but i couldn't concentrate i could not could not do jack shit when it came to that kind of thing um i am going to be seeing pacific um in the next week uh so i will tell them about my ridiculous antics doing all of this and bring them my next lot of ideas relating to second line treatments and maybe what they could do for me and maybe some kind of compromise on the medication um i think they're good ideas no doubt they will think they're fucking useless just the same as they have every fucking time i see them 
over the past two to three years. Um, but uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Oh, and it, you know, when it comes to the ADHD, I'm sure some people are going to wonder, like, why, why do you not just get your ADHD properly medicated rather than like dicking around with stuff that's not really designed for medicating ADHD? Because I do feel it's one of the reasons that I will never be able to come off methadone is the fact that it, it does sort my ADHD out so well. Um, unfortunately, I can't get ADHD medications for like a variety of reasons. Um, for one, they don't want to prescribe stimulants to someone with a history of eating disorders um, and a long and messy history of mental illness. Generally, we don't want to risk making it worse. At the time that they said this, I was like actively suicidal. Um, so I don't really know what they thought they were making worse, how they could possibly make it worse. It's like, look, if someone's genuinely about to like kill themselves, for God's sake, try everything, try everything. Um, no, 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 no. So they won't give me stimulants. Um, they will, they're, they're kind of bandying around the idea of putting me on atomoxetine, which is really just a fucking antidepressant. I've been on a lot of antidepressants. None of them were any good for me. Um, I'm not particularly depressed right now. I don't want to go on that shit, but my ADHD is such bullshit right now. I am willing to try this stuff. So I might go on that soon and see if it's any good. Only 40% of people find it any good for ADHD. So it's not really like ragingly successful. Um, <coughs> but um, yeah, the other problem with ADHD medication to me though, is that because of the fact that I injected so much speed and cocaine in my early 20s, my central nervous system is, is shot to shit. And um, I can't even drink caffeinated coffee anymore. Uh, I did try Adderall, like slightly illicitly, um, about eight months ago, and it was great for my brain. My brain was like slowed down, it was focused, I could concentrate, I could write. So I got about three hours of like brilliant focus and concentration off a single dose, but then I got three days of my nervous system being buggered, just like twitchy, shaky, um, just weird, anxious, weird heart heartbeats and stuff. It was just no good. Um, maybe my body would get used to it if I took it like continually for like days and days and days. My body might stop complaining, but I don't know. Um, but I do find this is one of the reasons, you know, this is one of the reasons that I am so like stubborn and difficult about about um <laughs> opioid prescriptions including methadone um is that it, it it's like the one and only thing that fucking sorts out my adhd and helps me concentrate um that i you know i i didn't even know that i had adhd until a year or two ago um and even back in like in college back in about 2010 2011 when i was still using heroin i was so much more functional on opioids than I am like without them because of the ADHD stuff that I didn't even know I had. Please God do, do not take this as like a suggestion though. If, if you're an ADHD person and you're struggling to get medication, please don't go out there and, and decide that smack is the answer. It's, it's n n no, uh, you, you don't want to fuck with things that lead you towards needles. You don't want to fuck with things that lead you towards being physically addicted to stuff and dealing with withdrawal and all that, the miseries that come with that. Please just, just keep fighting with your doctors and get the proper medication for it. Um, but as like, I'm so backed into a corner at this point with the fact that I can't take stimulants because they fuck me up because my body is fried, but you know, I'm on, already on the methadone prescription. Um, and it helps me focus. And if there's nothing else that I can get, well, I'm kind of, kind of glued to this shit, which it is this, this huge double-edged sword, you know, because I don't enjoy the, you know, as I say, the brain fog and just feeling so stupid all the time, not being able to drive my car because of the brain fog. I need to taper it down to a degree, but it's like, where am I going to find the perfect balance of being able to focus, but not being so su stupidly foggy all the time? Like it's, it's, it's not a perfect solution by any means, which is, is why the fucking second line treatment would be so much better of a solution because it's a shorter acting opiate. I'd be able to you know, drive my car, get shit done, do all clear-headed stuff, have my own personality back, other than just constantly being like, you know, stupid, stupid, boshed out on, on methadone, but like without any, any pleasurable anything um, at this point. It's just, just brain fog and sleepiness. And honestly, like, I do feel like the, the dose of methadone I'm on at the moment, like there, there have been times that it has gotten dangerous, that it just, it builds up and it builds up in your system. And there, there have been some days where I just, I'm just fucking nodded out of sleep, like all fucking day. Um, and it's like, obviously that's, that's not great. That's not really safe. That's not really great. Um, certainly not productive or helpful. Um, so, uh, 
yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm pissed off that, that this taper kind of got stopped by this germ that has seen fit to infest my chest. But anyway, thank you for enduring this enormous waffle. If you are someone who is also dealing with shit drug treatment, then please spill your story below. I would be fascinated to hear it. And yes, anyone who is intrigued by the book I mentioned at the beginning, which will hopefully be coming out by the end of January, the book about kind of shit addiction treatment and being neurodivergent and being an addict, all the arguments you get in do with everyone around you people who have dealt with neurodivergence and addiction i like i think i hope some of you are going to get it and really like it but people who haven't dealt with neurodivergence or addiction i think you're going to think my protagonist is the biggest twat in the world and i think you're gonna hate him nonetheless i will let you know when it is coming out and hopefully you don't hate it Urgh. so uh, anyway thank you for tolerating this this vast waffle me and uh, <coughs> all my germs are going to fuck away now so uh yeah, uh, if you're in the UK, please do everything you can to get registered to vote. Uh, make sure you have jumped through all the stupid hoops that the Tories have put in place about photo ID and all of that, so that when the next election comes, you can hopefully kick these motherfuckers out of office and, um, you know, give us all our country back without it all crumbling to complete shit. Uh, and... With all of that said, I'm going to shut up. So uh, thank you for listening. I've run out. Bye-bye.